The Kungsleden, or King's Trail, 440 kilometres, or if doing the road walk, 460 kilometres of pristine wilderness trail straddling the Arctic Circle in the extreme north of Sweden, a region often referred to as Lapland or Laponia. A tiny population of a mere 125,000 for an area as large as Britain. For many, there wasn't a huge socially safe choice of treks available this year. Several through hikes had to be abandoned, but thankfully, Sweden's stores remained open. A last minute decision to come caused by a limited time window between work, the mosquitoes dying and the trail hook closures required a few days of frantic planning and would need a faster pace, 14 days instead of 28. Trying to remain as environmentally sound as possible for this trip required lots of transport. Nine trains, two coaches and two short flights. So I was relieved to reach Abisko and the start of the trail. Straight out of the gate, tranquility permeates throughout. A mere glimpse of the forthcoming tundra's soft, yet at times harsh beauty awaits. Nature's vast bounty is in abundance all around, but the elusive cloudberry would never be found. Just a few weeks too late.
It's the simple things that matter. The air clean, the water pure, safe and free. The densely packed angular rocks proves an unexpected challenge, a stark contrast to the tamed wooden footpaths so far. On the highest point of the trail amongst the previous year's snow, life can be a struggle of survival. pleasure of illicitly using an emergency cabin is so enticing. The sight of rubbish abandoned, shameful. Perhaps LNT just doesn't translate into Swedish very well. The opportunity presented itself far too quickly to capture this rare wolverine. The product of a strange menage a trois betwixt a bear, wolf and badger. The privilege I felt was immense. Thankfully this was slower to run away. still warm lagoon off the river, well before the day's end and nearly a week without bathing, proves too tempting to resist. A chance too to do laundry and dry out whilst basking in the warm evening sun, appealing.
The sun is high in the sky and the landscape is so devoid of fellow human contact and conversation. Only with your own reflection for company in the empty moments will you find if you can be alone with yourself and enjoy the company you keep. The vagaries of the fickle wind make it clear that it is in command, not our itineraries with boat crossings. Just go with the flow, relax and wait. landscape remains unchanging with only a few distractions. Reindeer shyly following me along. Conversations with chatty hikers. Not. Distantly social. We all have our own needs. As rain gets soaked in over skiff, I can't wait two days for it to clear. 
so I race eight and a half kilometers to Axe over slick rocks to make it for the next boat. I wait ten minutes for the boat and the quickly disappearing view of Skiff shows its elusive beauty. The heavens really open up and a cabin miraculously awaits on the shoreline, just in time. At the end of this life, all you have is a wooden box. In this beautiful world, all you need is essentially the same. With shelter comes warmth and rest. Autumn colours are appearing, making it all too apparent that winter will soon be upon us. chance encounter with Bjorn and two honeymooners provides me with enough cheese for the next week. Perfect trail magic.
There comes a point during the day on any trail where you realise trying to gingerly cross mud and water forever and dry becomes a pointlessly futile exercise. Shedding light or weight upon the ideology and the strategy of a simpler, harmonious life with less. It's not that it's just the belief and the burden of weight alone. It's a less cluttered, simpler and more freer life without complications, whilst also leaving only the smallest of footprints upon her. Why be a pack horse? 25 kilos ain't fun. The one of the king could be described in the distance. Lightness allowed a 10k race there, just in time for another boat ride and ice cream. My pack is full of food already, so this newly built supermarket proves a largely lost opportunity. Leaving Vic Jock with an ice cream lunch spurs me onwards along fast trails and start crushing the miles. The ephemerally short season of autumn is spreading its wreath of richness of colours day by day as I race its frontiers southwards.
It's been three days now without a single soul in sight. Only the wind and the windmills of your mind remain ever present. The communities you pass with fellow trekkers just aren't there. They can barely even hold the title of Hamlet. It may be cold and wet, but my heart just sees happiness and rainbows. Far from the rushing rivers when you hold your breath, there is but not a single sound, peace, in that time's discordant world.
A serenade of violins at Saitestuka was most welcome after a cold, wet night. I could have stopped to enjoy its comforts longer, but I had to immerse myself and lean hard again into the high winds, laden heavy, and head to Vitus Galli, as camping is out of the question. Again, it's just a wooden box, but that's all I need to keep the numbness in my limbs at bay. The Kungsleden had a different ending than normal, without the usual hard to articulate emotional confusion at the end. The last kilometre of trail into Hemmervan petered out into nothing with an as of yet unfound monument as a finishing post, so a slightly inconclusive finish. I never did see the Aurora Borealis, the solar cycle, summer months and clouds inevitably played me a bad hand. Some dreams will have to be delayed, but never forgotten. <laughs>